Are you on the search for a new real estate brokerage or company? You probably need to beef up your resume. We got you covered, coming up. What's up guys, Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, real estate brokers, and investors grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. I've got a special, special guest today, Rhonda. She is VP of Operations within our company. I'm super excited to have her. And the sole reason is she's a professional resume writer. Isn't that right, Rhonda? Yes, yes. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into a series of questions that hopefully help you guys out if you guys are searching for uh, another real estate company. You're going to be want to be armed with a resume and uh, keep in mind it's always a two-way interview. You're going to be interviewing that brokerage but at the same time you really have to be prepared um, on your experience and expertise and what you've done in the past because uh, you, you don't want to have a missed opportunity if you're going to go ahead and interview with a really good solid real estate brokerage. So what do you think should be included on a real estate agent's resume, like the, the nuts and bolts? What, what's the... Basically, whatever they are advertising in terms of the description, job description, and their mission. If you look at their mission statement, they tell you right there what they're all about. And so your resume should reflect what they want in, in whatever that position is, um, the hard skills, the soft skills, what your training is, um, your core competencies, which are your skills, um, your background and how it relates to that position, uh, your accomplishments, your rewards or awards from other employees that speak to um, how you benefited their company and how you can benefit this company. So your, your resume should reflect um, your ability to do the job that they want done. I tell uh, clients all the time, we should look at whoever they are applying to, we should look at the mission statement of that company and see what they're all about. Gotcha. Right? And, um, and you know, it's about you being happy as well as the company being happy. So you want to see what they're about. And then if what you're about and what they're about doesn't really line up, maybe that's not the workers for you. And you should keep going. Yeah. And so you look at, you take a hard look at what your skills are and what your qualifications are and what makes you happy. What do you do? Because when you're happy in what you're doing, you're going to benefit the company you're working for. No doubt. You're going to be way more successful. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think a lot of people will stay with not just real estate brokerages, but in jobs themselves. Mm -hmm. And they clock in and clock out and hate their lives because yes, exactly. they're completely miserable and and their their uh, values are not aligned with the values of the Correct. company yeah. and I, I couldn't agree more that's awesome um what what would you say important skills or, or qualities somebody should list on a resume um so basically there are there are basic skills and qualifications of communication your ability to communicate um your ability to uh, function, whether it's uh, technical skills or skills related to um, it, it sales, you know. Um, and so w whatever the position calls for, um, you need to dig deep in terms of what your background, you know, like if you are, if you were previously in sales, then it'll be easier to communicate that. But if you didn't, say like you were a cashier, mm -hmm. um, still that's, sales you're dealing with customers right um you have to know how to speak to, to people you know how you have to know how to uh deal with the financial aspect as well as the people aspect so that's a good point because i think even if you're really green or brand new or you're young as a real estate agent i think a lot of people are saying to themselves i don't have skills i don't have experience right. but yeah at the end of the day you know you you could be fresh out of high school mm -hmm. did you play sports Yes. You know, yes. would those skills convey? Were you a, a leader of a team or whatever? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. would you even put something like that on a resume? Oh, yes, if you were definitely. Younger? Um, I even tell clients, uh, you know, that you volunteer. Uh, you know, even, you know, people look at uh, gaps in employment as a bad thing, but, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, you can look at, you know, different scenarios where you might, you know, if you attend a church that you, you know, you, you helped out and or if you, you know, I like to do things on the side like, uh, you know, work with children with disabilities. Um, and those are skills that can be transferred over to a paying position. 
Yeah, huge. And sometimes you're <laughs> learning a lot more in that kind of yes, yes. Uh, time put in yes. than, than even yes. a job position. So yes. that's yes. awesome. Um, now you mentioned something about format before we even started recording. What, what, what kind of format, like if somebody's really not even great on a computer or whatever, like what, what should they be using? So there are basic formats. Um, the most uh, typical one is chronological. Um, where is, you know, if you have a steady work history, uh, a steady progression, then, you know, chronological, it will work for you. Uh, but say you are fresh out of college and you don't really have a background what you're applying to, uh, and, but you do have a lot of volunteer experience or you have things that you've done that don't necessarily pertain to the position you're applying to, you can use a functional format where you would focus on what you, as far as uh, your accomplishments and skills that you've acquired and the things you've done, not necessarily in a job that pertains to the one you're applying to. Gotcha. So, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the timeline. Yes, exactly. And more just exactly. kind of like, this is what I've accomplished exactly, or, or exactly. done or experienced. Yes, and then there are combination, which you can use a combination of the two. Um, and actually, there are a few more. I mean, you know, there is something called direct competency. Um, someone who's really uh, had a focused uh, history in terms of what you're doing, doctor. You know, right. um, you've always been a doctor, but maybe in different settings, different hospitals, different practices. So, you know, they're, again, a steady progression. So I think that's a great point, too, because the real estate industry, I mean, if you ask any real estate agent what your past occupation was. Right. And many times they've had three, four, five different strong occupations in, in corporate America or doctors or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. transitioning into this, um, that that's an extremely good point. Um, what, what should you leave off of a resume? Um, again, that's very, very specific to the person and their background. Um, I, I don't necessarily tell people we should leave things off, but I do, um, like one person may have two or three different resumes. And this is not to be deceptive. This is to, it, 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 being a realtor, you're only interested in what pertains to you. You're looking for the qualifications and skills that pertain to what you're looking for in an employer. Right. So when an, when an employer or prospective employer brings a resume, you want to see quickly, you want to be able to scan. So we tailor, I'll tell a resume so that it's quickly scannable, seven seconds or less. I like for that. For them to be able to see, do they have what I need? in terms of the, qualifications. That's a great point because, I mean, I, I personally have interviewed uh, t hundreds of real estate agents over the years. And if, 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 it's, too, if it's too much, too much yeah. then I'm almost like, all right, give me one that's easier to read. Yes. I'll put that one almost on the, subconsciously, yes. I'll put that one on the top yeah. of the stack to interview first or yes. whatever the case is. Yes. So I agree with that. You, you kind of have to, um, recreate your resume. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, recreate it for where real estate industry as opposed mm -hmm. to some other mm -hmm. position. So, mm -hmm. great point. I, I recently did a resume for someone who um, that was actually the problem. When you look at their resume, you could tell that they had skills, but it was so overwhelming to look at the resume that it was hard to pick out the ones that pertain to this position and that position. Yeah. So, I helped him by just simply creating two different resumes that he was in office and administration, but he was also in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I can honestly say, you know, we hired Rhonda and when I got her email with uh, specific questions that I asked um, and reviewed her, her resume, I can tell you I was blown away. She stood out just because of her resume and, and what was written uh, above all others. And she was my first meeting, my first interview. and. I knew hands down once we met that it was going to be a great fit. So um, the the resumes can be huge, and and also I think that a lot of real estate agents don't understand that it it could lead to bigger things. If uh, one's resume, a broker could look at it and say, you know, you fit with you could potentially fit with your experience in uh, commercial financing could fit with this team over here. Mm -hmm. So you never want to neglect having a resume and I've interviewed hundreds of real estate agents that didn't have any resume at all you know mm -hmm. and 
And, you know, I kind of want to know a little bit of background about somebody. I, yeah. I want to have yeah. actually that resume before we even meet. So I kind of yeah. know what we're, what we're getting into. Yeah. Um, so what, what would you say is the number one, if, if you had to write one sentence, what's the number one most important thing about putting on a resume? I would say um, at the beginning of all resumes, you either see an objective statement or a summary statement, and that's even tailor-made to, again, what the person is about and what they're applying to. But I would say that that summary statement or objective should speak it pretty much be very uh, dense in terms of the information that a potential employer is looking for. Everything you're looking for should be in that statement. So that should be your impact statement right there, right at the beginning. Gotcha. Because a lot of times that's what makes or breaks whether or not they go any further. Yeah, makes sense. I'm putting you on the spot. So could yes. you give one right now for real estate? <laughs> Just wing it. Okay, so if you can clip, I can read something really quick and then <laughs> say it. Yeah, you okay. got one? Okay, yeah. I do actually. I put it out one. Really? Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, commercial and residential real estate sales associate with over four years of experience selling properties and homes throughout the Chicago, the Chicago area with a proven track record of success. Able to generate own business through networking and, prospect and prospecting. Proving closer, adept at working with property owners and management and developing successful business relationships with clients. So basically... Oh, that's beautiful. Well, basically... Um, Old resumes, old style resumes told what they could do. New style tells how you do it. Interesting. Say that again. Back years ago, the focus was on what you did. Yeah. Now you need to prove. You need to show with your, not just that statement, but you need to show how you did it. You need to quantify, which means you need to, if, if you're in a numbers type, you know position you need to show the numbers you need to be able to back it up with your sales quotas um, i sold 100 homes last yes, year in yes, 2018 yes, got yes, it yeah so your statement should back that up it should it should be a teaser it's almost like looking at a, a movie trailer mm -hmm. that is what captures the audience or it's like the hook <laughs> that's right that's yeah. right it's the hook so you know oftentimes that tells someone if they want to keep going, if they want to keep reading. So what things do we not cover today? Um, you can ask any questions for Rhonda or myself, comment below, and we'll respond accordingly. As always, if you got anything, any good information out of this, we appreciate you if you subscribe and like this video. And uh, we have one to two videos, real estate related, coming at you every single week. So we appreciate your support. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.